From Washington, this is VOA News. The World Health Organization is moving past the death of Ebola educators. From the UN, most countries should join the fight against the Islamic State group. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. The World Health Organization says it will not be deterred in its efforts to combat Ebola in Guinea and other West African countries by the killing of a team of educators trying to raise awareness of the disease in a village in Guinea. The educators were reportedly killed by villagers in the town of Wom. Uh, fear, villagers fearful of the disease and suspicious of official efforts to combat it. Pierre Formente is with the World Health Organization. We need to investigate about these murders, but it should not stop us. We should continue the dialogue with the community. Meanwhile, the streets of Sierra Leone's capital were mostly empty Friday as the nation began a three-day lockdown to find hidden Ebola cases and stop the spread of the deadly disease. The United Nations Security Council Friday condemned the group calling itself the Islamic State and called for greater international support for the Iraqi government to counteract militants. All 15 council members approved the statement in a meeting chaired by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. In Thursday's referendum, Scotland voted against breaking away from the United Kingdom and becoming independent. Henry Ridgewell with a report. For the UK government in London, a moment of relief. Prime Minister David Cameron reiterated his pledge to give Scotland more powers. Alex Salmond, leader of the Yes campaign, We lost the referendum vote. Later announced his resignation as Scotland's first minister to take effect in November. Scotland can still emerge as the real winner. US President Barack Obama praised what he called passionate yet peaceful deliberations. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. This is VOA News. Prominent members of Nigeria's ruling People's De Democratic Party unanimously endorsed incumbent President Goodluck Jonathan to be the group's candidate in February's presidential election. That's according to the secretary of the party's board of trustees. Pope Francis will travel to Albania on Sunday, despite a recent warning from Iraq's ambassador to the Holy See that the pontiff could be targeted there by Islamist state jihadists. Francis has said he wants to visit Albania to highlight the rebirth of the Christianity that was brutally abolished during communist rule. The Roman Catholic Church leader has said that Albania is an example where Catholics, Orthodox Christians, and Muslims are working together to govern the country. Iran and six world powers open a new round of talks Friday about what concessions Tehran must make on its nuclear program in exchange for a continued re uh, reduction in sanctions. The talks in New York involve officials from Iran, the U.S., Britain, France, Russia, China, and Germany. Iran has said it is committed to reaching a nuclear deal. Sporadic clashes between Yemeni government forces and the Zaidi Shiite Houthi rebels besieging the capital, Sana'a, have residents on edge. Rebel advances in several places prompted the closure of the capital's main airport and most phone and internet service was cut. Edward Uranian reports for VOA from Cairo. Houthi rebels attacked Yemeni government forces in parts of the capital Sana'a Friday, paralyzing traffic and forcing residents to remain indoors for hours. Hakim al-Masmari, editor-in-chief of the Yemen Post newspaper, says the situation is tense and that all aspects of life are now being disrupted. Sana'a's national airport has been closed down. Phone lines have been closed down. Internet service has been closed down. The United Nations Special Envoy Jamal Ben Omar says he is continuing his mediation effort with the rebels and that he is hopeful for an eventual agreement. 
Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. The United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon is demanding an end to attacks on UN peacekeepers in northern Mali after a bomb blast killed five peacekeepers on Thursday. The Secretary General said he's outraged by the roadside bomb attack in the Canal region. The father of a British rapper suspected of beheading an American journalist pleaded guilty in a U.S. court on Friday to planning the 1998 bombings of two embassies in Africa that killed hundreds of people. Abdel Abdel Bari admitted to a New York judge that he collaborated with Osama bin Laden and others to blow up the U.S. diplomatic missions in Kenya and Tanzania. The blast killed 224 people. I'm Vincent Bruce in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.